Welcome to the Switch Click Podcast, episode 59, and the third Zelda Month episode. My name is Dakota, and Nathan is the one joining me. Hello! Tonight we welcome Lee Kovacs to the show. She is a remarkable cosplayer and artist, as well as being a Pokemon partner and Nintendo brand ambassador. Welcome to the show! Hi! Thanks for having me. During the entire month of November, we'll be celebrating Zelda Month. This includes special podcast episodes that interview some of the greatest online creators. We'll also be releasing played by tier reviews on a handful of fan favorite Zelda games every Sunday. On top of all that, we'll be streaming a complete playthrough of Ocarina of Time on our YouTube channel. Check out the hype trailer on our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the celebration. Now, you are our biggest guest to date, but for those who don't know you, who are you and what particularly do you do? Well, hi, I'm Lee. I'm Lee Kovacs. Uh, first and foremost, I am a gamer, as, as we all are. And uh, I'm also an artist. Uh, I like to do a lot of illustrations, um, create, like, not really crafting, but like physical things. And uh, I'm mainly known for making costumes of iconic Nintendo characters. It's obvious from your Twitter account. That's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think your origin story as a creator is? Do you have oh, a goodness. specific story? <laughs> uh, nothing that is remotely like interesting. I was hit by a meteorite that was made out of paint. No, um, I, I was uh, growing up really little. I was, I've always had an interest in drawing for pretty much as long as I can remember. And, and just creating things. I've always... I've always wanted to like have things like, you know, when you're a kid and you watch like a movie or a cartoon and you're like, oh, I want that. Like, I want that. that. Yeah. So I would make things out of cardboard. Um, wouldn't be the greatest. And like, also when I was really young, we didn't really have a lot of money to afford like a lot of toys and action figures and things like that. So I'd make my own out of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> out of the ones I couldn't have. So if I had like, like for example, if I had like the entire like main set of like action figures for like I don't know Ninja Turtles or something, the ones that I didn't have, I would make little cardboard versions of them. <laughs> so I guess just kind of like I'm like, oh, I want that. So I just end up making it. It wasn't the greatest, but hey, it was pretty good for the time. So it kept me happy as a kid. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, Ben. That certainly brought you far. Um, how about cosplay? What brought you into that? Um, definitely, it's it's odd, but it was actually Halloween that brought me into cosplay. Uh, when I started making costumes back in like the idea of of a, of making a costume that specifically wasn't worn just on Halloween, because I thought, why should I wear it only on Halloween if I'm going to put all this effort into it? It was actually like 2007, 2008. I didn't even know cosplay existed was a thing because you know why would you think to like look on the internet oh do people and you and you do think about like oh i'm sure some people have made costumes but i didn't think about it but thinking of all that now i'm like wait i should have thought about it because i've been attending like star trek conventions since i was like really young and 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 I and, and it's funny because this didn't click with me until just now. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. People have done costumes like way before, even not for Halloween. And we used to always dress up for that. Uh, but I, I guess for like a fictional thing that I like so much, I just wanted to make a Link costume for Halloween because you just couldn't get one. And so Link from Ocarina of Time was the first Link costume I've fully made, like from top to bottom. I've made costumes even before then. But not as a serious thing. It was kind of like, yay, I did something. All right, mom, take a picture of me with the Polaroid camera. Because that's how long ago it was. Wow. (laughs) It was a long time ago. (laughs) I'm serious. It was a Polaroid. (laughs) You still have those photos? (laughs) I do. I do have. I do have some. I I ended up keep making a photo album. And I think it's at my parents' place. Because I don't have them. Link was literally where it all began. He, For some reason, I think he just sparked this thing in my head. Like, hey, why don't you just make a costume? So I made a costume of Link for Halloween after Ocarina of Time came out for for the following year. And I was just like, I'm going to be Link. And and it took me a very long time to do. I literally started it like when, when Ocarina of Time came out. And I was just like gathering references, trying to figure out how this works. Because I've never sewn anything before. So like... How long did it take you to get the costume done? 
oh my goodness, uh, that costume has gone through so many revisions. <laughs> uh, I think I remade the costume probably five, four or five times total, wow. like completely from scratch uh, since the revision. Um, I still have my pictures of of my first one though, and I think I've actually uploaded it to my Twitter between like what my first one looked like and what my new one looks like or my most recent. Um, but oh man, I have no idea. It must have taken me months. Obviously, I couldn't sew, so I, I looked for like altered clothing like clothing i can alter and stuff and then and i just tried to like figure out how to make things from there it was it was a weird process because like i had no idea how to sew i had to figure it all by myself yeah because obviously to like cosplay you don't need to know how to sew you don't really need to know all these like technical aspects you can probably just put some fabric together with a hat and if you look that like the character then you're probably fine i mean back in that day nobody cared <laughs> you could do whatever yeah. Did anybody recognize you as Link or no? Uh, not really. Um, not really. But thinking about it now, I'm kind of like, well, I guess, you know, Ocarina of Time was kind of like a big thing and not many, not that many people were into games. My friends obviously recognize me because I never shut up about Zelda, but <laughs> the general public people, because I wore it to like this costume contest. I wore it to a random costume contest someplace, like a store or something, and nobody knew who I was. But I yeah. ended up I ended up winning because I had like oh. a full costume with like a sword and shield. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Knock off uh, Peter Pan. Exactly. I, I, I've, I've received that comment so many times. Oh, it <laughs> angers me. It angers me. <laughs> I have the same feeling because uh, we have a local Comic Con in our town, and I think I dressed up as a, a Nintendo Switch controller. So, and, oh, that's like, funny. My arms could like come off the controller bit in the center and oh, only man. i think like five people knew only because like the switch came out a month before the event wow. but it was still pretty cool i don't know if we even have photos of that but oh that would be cool see you better share those you better share those on the on the internet <laughs> if you don't mind sharing what's your uh creative process in either cosplay or illustration is there any tips or tricks that you've picked up over the years yeah um well when creating a costume first of all it's literally finding all of your references uh, what i do is i spend hours just getting all my references uh a long time ago i didn't used to be as picky but now i'm very very picky as in like figuring out all right this thing is from this length it reaches from their shoulder to like mid elbow or something like i'm very picky about that kind of stuff now and I hate it because I consider myself a perfectionist uh, when it comes to costumes. And sometimes I wish I wasn't. Sometimes I wish I could just like, just let it go. Just do it. Just do whatever. Um, hey, it paid off. It no, certainly has paid off a lot. <laughs> Thanks. I think that's what makes... Attention. Oh, yes, I know. I'm so excited <laughs> about that. Um, oh, God. the Me back then would have freaked out. Um, but so I... I take all my references and I gather a lot. Like I try to get as many angles as I can and I'll just be in the video games for hours. Just uh, back in, back in the days, <laughs> back in my days, uh, I used to, um, I used to have a sketchbook. I drew out all my references because um, you didn't really have the function nowadays where you can like, you know, hit the screenshot button on your Nintendo switch. Like, you know, yeah. you can nowadays, but back then, well, I would hook it up to the VCR, first of all, and I would record everything. And then I would take my sketchbook and I would sketch all the tiny little details of anything and everything I can. And that's pretty much how I documented all the costumes. So you got to take as much references as you can. Uh, and then after that, you start breaking down the costume into pieces. Like, let's say, all right, let's do Link. Let me use a reference. All right, Breath of the Wild Link. I have one right here. Uh, so let's see. He would be the tunic, right? And then you have to break down, all right, he has three belts, he has his pants, he has his undershirt, he has his quiver, he has, you know, his boots. So that's pretty much broken down into the main parts. And then and then if he has additional props like the sword and shield, which one would it be, you know? So you have, like, you start jotting down all these pieces, and then within those, you start figuring out, all right, shirt, breaking down, do I need to get a pattern for it, or do I make my own pattern, you know? 
or like let's say for a tunic do i just reuse one of my previous tunic patterns or do i make a new one so all my lists just kind of like go down to just break everything down into as as detailed list of you can so it's kind of more like a like a task list yeah uh and, and then and then once you start doing that then i guess it's time to start figuring out your materials <laughs> and do i need a wig so my whole thing back in the day was like i always made the costume first and then i saved the wig for last no real reason except laziness i guess and a long time ago back in my old days uh <laughs> you couldn't get wigs in every color like nowadays nowadays oh my god people nowadays have access to everything right and so you couldn't get wigs in every color. Luckily, Link has quite natural-ish color hair. So I went to a local beauty supply store and bought my wig there, which worked out nice. Um, but I always ended up saving my wigs for last, which is just a mistake on my part, personally, I think. Because sometimes it's really difficult to find the right style that could work. And so I would end up making costumes and then I just wouldn't have a wig to like go along with it. But nowadays what I do is the first thing I ever buy is a wig. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's a mistake too now because I have more wigs than I have costumes done for the wigs. And then I never get around to making the costume. So you basically have a backlog of a bunch of costumes right now. Oh yeah. I, I cleared my wish list. I made a new one. <laughs> I cleared it. <laughs> It got it got too long. I was like, ah, oh, I gotta get rid of some stuff. I know I gotta be truthful and honest to myself. I'll never make this. <laughs> and speaking of that difficulty, what costume overall, or like what design was the most difficult for you to make or recreate? That one has to be um, in two thousand and eight. Blizzard Blizzard messaged me um, mm -hmm. saying that hey, we wanted to create this costume, and Nintendo told us to message you. It was for their Demon Hunter Ganondorf armor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember. They they had like a new Diablo thing with a Ganondorf armor. Oh, yes, yes. That was a bonus. That they yeah, had. it was like a bonus skin. And yep. the Demon Hunter character, all, pretty much all the characters had their own Ganondorf armor. They asked me to make that. Oh wow! I'm looking at a screenshot right I'm now. I'm looking at it. I'm looks... looking at it too. It is insane. <laughs> yeah, I actually have one picture up on my Instagram of it because I never got around to doing a photo shoot. Um, it's it's easy to wear. It's fun to wear, but it was so difficult because literally what you see if you look up a Google image reference for Demon Hunter Ganondorf, that's the kind of reference I got. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, oh my god. So I pretty much had to like make up most of it. Because <laughs> I guess the game wasn't out by then. It was more No, it was. Oh <laughs> it, it it was. I guess okay, I don't know what really happened, so I'm just kind of making this up, but I'm assuming that they designed the costume directly onto the model. So there's no actual reference sheets or anything. Oh yeah, I actually yeah. see the Twitter photo if you search it. Yeah, on I Google. saw I see it too. Yeah, so I don't think they actually created a concept art image. What I'm mm. assuming is Nintendo sent them references of Ganondorf, and they just kind of made it directly as a skin instead of creating like a concept art and and any high quality thing. So that was my reference. And uh, that game. Was, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That game came out all the way back in 2012. So, and yeah. the fact that they decided to add your costume in 2017, I think it was 2017 or 18. It was, it was 2018. 2018. Like, that was, that's <laughs> impressive. And it was 2018 because, well, it was because they, they launched uh, Diablo yeah. um, for the Switch. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm glad because I finally got a chance to really play it. But, I was like, okay, I'm going to play the game because I want the Ganondorf armor. And I almost made it to the end of the game and I never had enough money to buy the Ganondorf armor. So I was like, aw. <laughs> it's actually uh, worth that much. Wow. It's a lot of money in the game. <laughs> but that was oh. the hardest thing to make because it just, I had to make, I had to go following those little pixelated references as much as I could. But I had to make a lot of it up while still trying to, stay true to that you know so it was really difficult it was very difficult yeah and you also do some other artistic stuff 
Like some examples are you do digital painting, line sketches, mm -hmm. uh, even the handcrafts you mentioned earlier. Um, how did you happen upon this, what I would call a Swiss Army knife of abilities? Um, thanks for calling it that. <laughs> um, to me, I don't really see it like that, actually. Uh, to me, I, I guess in my sense, art is just an art. And I, I haven't. I just have a love and passion for all kinds of things art. I guess it's my weird, my weird curiosity of wanting to try so many things growing up. Like, uh, like I, I got it. Like I got into photography early on when I was young because my dad was a photographer. Uh, and then that didn't really go much of anywhere until recently, where I, I started doing nature photography. But going back to illustration, I kind of did that when I was little. I started with that. And then the it was weird because I have no idea how the costume thing even really. I know I wanted to make a link costume for Halloween, and then I was like, "Oh well, I want to make another costume," which is funny because my parents and my my brother, my they were all so against it. They're like, "You already have a costume. Why do you need another one?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Why not? I want to make another one. This is interesting. If I can have like Link's outfit, I want that. <laughs> you know." <laughs> So I guess it's just me trying so many different things. And it it's interesting because to me, I think cosplay brings all of that together. Because like, for example, I I went to school for uh, video game design. And so I learned a lot about 3D. Being able to bring all that 3D knowledge into cosplay again, you know? So I could do 3D modeling and 3D printing and that kind of stuff. Um, which, oh my God, thank goodness for 3D printing. Because, you know, that didn't exist like... 10 years ago or five years ago. <laughs> yeah. Every, we had to be suckers and, and sculpt everything by hand. <laughs> uh, I guess I just take everything together and my whole curiosity of trying different things and it all just kind of comes together. So in a sense, I think pretty much everyone who cosplays can do a whole bunch of different techniques because it's all implemented into cosplay, you know? Now, um, because, like as a Nintendo brand ambassador and Pokemon partner like how did you get to that point like how or like when exactly did they approach you and how does that kind of thing work if you're allowed um, to tell us <laughs> oh yeah I can I can go back to like way in the beginning so the very first time Nintendo has ever reached out to me was back in like 2004 or 2005 they actually met sent me an email to interview me for Nintendo Power magazine and that was a long time that ago. That is a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that, that was when Twilight Princess came out, actually. Um, which was like, you know, me as a big Nintendo nerd and Nintendo fan, I'm just like, oh my god, wait, what? What? Who did I get an email from? Oh my god. <laughs> and then they did that, and then I ended up appearing in like two or three other Nintendo magazines after that, which is still odd to me, because I was like, oh, that's like, I... I was a sucker for Nintendo Power Magazine. I used to read that thing all the time. And and just to get to be in it was just like a, a huge deal. And then after that, um, Twilight Princess happened and Nintendo allowed me to be, uh, brought me, like, was like, hey, why, you know, you could be Link at our booth uh, for, for Twilight Princess. And that wasn't like in an, any official capacity. It was just kind of like, yeah, come on, you know? <laughs> And and it's kind of interesting because that was my first time ever going to E3, uh, and and I was I was there as Link at you know at, from Twilight Princess, and then I had the the amazing opportunity to meet Shigeru uh, Miyamoto backstage because of that. Holy crap! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow, you're and living so, the dream, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that so, is that is a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, to me, that that's still kind of unbelievable because. I'm I'm like I worship the guy. Who doesn't? Yeah, you know, exactly. we all we all worship the guy. Um and and I got to meet him and and he uh I gave him a present which was a like a collage image of all these Nintendo characters that I made costumes of and I never expected to but he sent me an email personally uh Holy. like like weeks after the <laughs> oh show. My goodness. Weeks after the show he personally sent me an email. I still have that email and I cherish it forever. A, a picture of him in like the printing copy section of the offices somewhere in Nintendo Japan uh, of him holding the picture that I sent him or that I gave him. And I, I was just blown away because he didn't have to do that, but it's just, he did. 
that was like a huge milestone for me there. Uh, Cause uh, I, I like, come. I mean, you can't go any higher than Miyamoto, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, you, you've gotten his attention. You, you've, you've, you've won the game, you know? Um, but it, it's just such a huge honor to just that he himself appreciated the work I put into my Link costume, into my Twilight Princess Link costume, especially because that costume alone took me like six months to make because I handmade the chainmail suit. And that was like insane that I did that. But would I do it again? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a long process. Um, and then after that, it, after that, Nintendo kept like asking me to join them on events and stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> which was really interesting and nice. Because again, you know, they don't have to do that, but they did. And and I wasn't a brand ambassador to any official thing yet. One time when the uh, there was a Wii... Already by then, Nintendo has hired me to create costumes of characters and, and model for them. Uh, so it wasn't a brand ambassador thing, but it was... It was already being hired to do this kind of stuff. Uh, but in 2012, uh, they had me do Kid Icarus uh, in New York Com- not New York Comic Con. Con was that? Oh, PAX, PAX East. Oh, yeah, okay. PAX East. But so that year in um, 2012, they had the Wii U press event in New York City, and I get an email saying that Nintendo is is uh, inviting me to this event, and I'm like, but I live in San Francisco. They covered my entire travel, <laughs> and it wasn't okay. even—it wasn't even like a hired gig or anything. It wasn't like like, hey, Nintendo wants to uh, invite you to this event. You'll be staying at this like hotel, and here's your, uh, you know, you're going to be flying in, and and you'll be picked up by you know a thing to go to this event at a secret location because mm-hmm. that's what they like to do that. Uh, and I show up, and there's a ton of people there already, and I'm like. I'm here with my luggage straight from the airport, right? And I was just like, oh, where do I go? What do I do? I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> uh, Nintendo Fangirl was there. I'm, I'm sure you guys know Nintendo Fangirl. She was there, which was awesome because then I'm like, okay, thank goodness. I can run into somebody I know. But then I find uh, Krista, uh, Krista from Nintendo Minute. Oh, uh, her gaps. Uh, and I was like, hey, Krista, I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, where do I go? How do I get in? And she takes me up to the front and she's like, hey, one of our influencers is here. And I was like, I'm an influencer? What? <laughs> so this is like news to me, right? <laughs> they get me into the event and, and that happens. And then from then on, uh, I, I start getting invited to more and more events. And then they bring me on officially as a Nintendo brand ambassador, which was like, yay, dream come true. <laughs> Yeah, it was just it was just this really long process of like not being a brand ambassador except till like three, four years ago maybe. So basically working your way up the ladder in a sense. I guess so. I guess so cuz like they kept bringing me to events and I'm like why are you bringing me to events? I mean, I'm not complaining, but why are you bringing me to events? And you know, I guess you know, I, I promote the crap out of them. I'm constantly talking about Zelda and Nintendo and never shutting up, up about it. So that's pretty much how it really all happened. Is there any uh, specific backstory for the being a Pokemon partner? If that's any different, or I don't th- no, not really. Uh, I do talk about Pokemon, not as much as I talk about you know obviously Zelda or Nintendo stuff. But I think because I'm also a Nintendo brand ambassador, uh, they reached out to me because I still do talk about Pokemon sometimes. Uh, so Pokemon just reached out to me like that and just brought me on and says like hey we want to send you some stuff to review or or check out and stuff and so that's how i became a partner with that it was very quick simple for that one (laughs) unlike the nintendo one so besides uh mr miyamoto and krista have you met anyone cool yes (laughs) you probably have a massive list and oh my god (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna find way out over here (laughs) i have met I have met the, uh, the uh, to me, they're the, the, the Triforces, so the three of them, uh, Miyamoto, Eiji Anuma, or AJ Anuma, and uh, Koji Kondo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my heroes. <laughs> absolute <Holy> heroes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually met Eiji Anuma at the uh, Zelda Symphony, first debuted. Remember the uh, 25th anniversary? Yes. That, and they that showed was it off. amazing. And they showed it off at E3 that they're going to do concerts and the, they had the big one in LA. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Nintendo invited me down to that one. Uh, again, before I was a brand ambassador, they invited me down and I've kind of already kind of been in contact with Adrian Numa beforehand. Uh, and I asked them, I was like, are you going? I would love to meet you in person. <laughs> and we actually met up. It was really interesting. Uh, he wanted to meet up with me after the show. And I was there in my Link costume because I I was there to like pose with people and stuff and and enjoy the show. But I was there in my Link costume and both Eiji Numa and Koji Kondo were there waiting for me in like this side lobby area to to meet up. Actually, I lied. I have met Anuma before that. There's so many events. There's so, so many, many things. <laughs> it's all like, I really have to like think back. But like, oh my God, this also happened. Yeah. <laughs> so there are previous events where I, I met up with him. But like at that point was the, the most awesome time where I can, I presented them with gifts. I gave Anuma a link hat, which I later found out he gave to his son. And I found that really cute. Also, so um, wholesome. <laughs> and, uh, <yes. laughs> and then I gave Koji Kondo a uh, a uh, like a plush made Ocarina of Time that I made. And so I have a picture online somewhere that I took with both of them uh, with that. And so that was that was amazing. The, my three heroes, I've met them, <laughs> and it's amazing. Uh, and then and then I. And then Reggie. <laughs> yeah, of course, Reggie. <laughs> I, I've met Reggie. There's actually a funny story with Reggie. I ran into him at a Costco once. What? Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh <my laughs> <God>. <laughs> you find him. <laughs> well, well, I've already met him beforehand, but like we were in Costco one day and we're like, oh, hey, it's Reggie. <laughs> there he is. He's just shopping at Costco, doing his, his, his regular thing. <laughs> and um, so that was funny. But. I mean, we all live in the same area because we're all in the Redmond area up here in Washington. And you're bound to run into somebody that works at Nintendo. So, Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like, you know, like one of the higher ups, Bill or Reggie. Oh, and then I, I met Bill Trinan, too. I, I got to give him credit. I met Bill. He's awesome. He's a fun guy. He looks like a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, He's certainly. pretty fun. I am kind of curious. Um, was there a language barrier or does Miyamoto know English pretty well? very very little bit at back then like you can say hi uh or things like that but and, and like, hi, like hi thank you and then i also i also knew very simple japanese too but bill definitely helped translate a lot of stuff yeah there there is a i don't know what it is like now i'm sure they probably had a lot more practice with english but i definitely say their english is way better than my japanese <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to japan have they ever I have you? not. <laughs> I have not. Oh, you hear that, Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, to Japan. That's, that's a potential. <laughs> oh, my God. I keep hoping that, like, take all of us, all the super, all the brand ambassadors to Super Nintendo World, please. Oh, my God. Take us, please. Take us. <laughs> I feel like the closest I've gotten is the uh, the, the New York store. <laughs> oh, Same yeah. Here. The New yeah. York store is so nice. Uh, it's just a great place. That's where I it bought my so nice. first amiibo, which was Link. Woo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Japan's my number one place to go to after COVID. Mm -hmm. I've. Oh, my God. I, need I was wanting, there. we were planning on going. We were planning on going, and then COVID happened. Thanks a lot. Ruined it. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, but my ultimate places to hit up is uh, Super Nintendo World. Then Kyoto, uh, Nintendo in Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, I can, if I can, then go back to Super Nintendo World and stay there until my flight back. 100%. <laughs> my plan yeah. is basically the same thing, but I'm also gonna yeah. uh, hit up the the forest that Miyamoto grew up in that like inspired oh, gosh, Zelda yes. and Star Star Fox and stuff. That would be a great place to go to. Yeah, there. I mean, I'm 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 obviously you know exaggerating but yes there are tons of places i really want to go see japan is such a beautiful place man i'm also oh, a huge yeah. ghibli fan so oh, yeah. a lot of the locations there are definitely inspired by you know it's just it's ghibli it's you know so i want to hit up a lot of the places up there oh man it's so nice what would you consider to be your biggest opportunity given to you in your profession it would definitely have to be nintendo trusting me to bring their characters to life Especially Link and Zelda, because those two characters are very dear to me. Yeah, Nintendo really holds their characters to their heart. So 
when you get that kind of opportunity and you met their creators, it's almost like a you got the blessing. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, it definitely does feel like that. You know, I mean, the last thing I want is to disappoint them with like my work or something. That would be awful. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would quit cosplay forever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess just knowing that they know my work exists is just the greatest opportunity and achievement and continuing to be able to make stuff for them. Yeah. Cause like, cause now like I get to make things, uh, being a brand ambassador, I get to make things for them. Uh, that's, you know, crafting things or sewing things or, or illustrations or, or, uh, costume things. And it's just, it's, I've never thought that, you know, I would have a career in life like this. So it's it's really awesome. Now, here comes the usual question we've asked our previous mm-hmm. guests so far. Oh, boy. Um, how many Zelda games have you played? All of them. Oh. <laughs> Except the CDIs. I haven't played those. If I, had oh a CD, if I had a Philips CDI, I would play them. And I'd probably burn my eyes out afterwards, but I would, <laughs> I would play them. Uh, no, I have played every single Zelda game. Um, every single one. Every single one. Even the well, every most, every single every single official one. Why? Even the one. Even, even, even the most niche ones, like the four, like four swords. Oh heck yeah! <laughs> even those. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I I I have every single Zelda game too. Nice. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a huge collector of Zelda mm-hmm. memorabilia and and the games themselves. Um. You probably have and, a shrine at your house that all those oh, games. I mean, not really. I don't have room for them. I have <laughs> too much Zelda things. I actually have them all in boxes, most of them. Yeah, that's that's good enough. I mean, they're they're kept safe. You know, they're kept safe. Oh, like the most recent stuff, like Breath of the Wild stuff. That stuff's out because you know I've been collecting that while I've been living in the house I'm currently living in. So. But everything else, since I've packed and moved and all that, they've been pretty much in boxes. Um, it's kind of sad because I miss looking at them, but but at least everything is kept safe. So I take it because you played every Zelda game, the first Zelda game happens to be like your first Zelda game? First Zelda game is actually NES, the NES like Zelda. The very first one on the NES? Yep, yep the very first one. Um, <laughs> I'm way older than anyone thinks I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> My first console was the Atari. <laughs> oh, that goes far back. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I've pretty much been a gamer my entire life. But it wasn't until Link to the Past that Zelda really stuck with me. There wasn't really much to the first game, if you think about it. it yeah, like, that's true. Like, go, kinda... Get around. But there was just so much story in, in Link to the Past. Yeah. That, that one, it just stuck better. And I think the visuals, too. You know? Uh, I've always been a, a fan of like medieval things and castles and that kind of stuff. So I think that's kind of what made Zelda also stick a lot more with me. Yeah. So that was my first one. And man, it just, just kept going from there. My parents thought it was a phase I'm going through. Like, I swear, I remember them telling me that, oh, another Zelda thing. This is most likely a phase you're going through. And I'm like, look at me now. Woo. <laughs> for that company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not a phase. I do stuff for Nintendo. Now. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, it, it, I mean, my parents are proud of me. <laughs> At least I hope so. Would you consider the NES version or Link to the Past your favorite Zelda game, or do you have one specifically? Uh, okay. It's funny that I actually tweeted about that this morning. Oh. Uh, I actually tweeted oh, about well, my favorite Zelda I'll... game this morning because because uh, I see so many people asking me on like social medias and stuff, like, what's your favorite yeah, Zelda that's... game? I don't have a favorite. I can't pick a favorite. That's like asking me if I have more than one pet. Which pet is your favorite? I have, <laughs> you know, and it's it. I I can't pick one. As yeah, much you. as I try, I I sit down and I think about it, and I'm like, well, you know, I really like. Obviously, the big console ones are the ones that stand out the most, right? Because they're the most talked about. They really stick in your memory and everything. So, like for example, Link's Awakening has been a favorite of mine. One of my favorites, not the favorite, but one of my favorites for the longest time on the Game Boy because I just played it so many times. I love Link's Awakening, but then, you know, I love The Wind Waker because it's very different. Link is so expressive. You've never seen him so expressive. There's 
so many things that happened in the Wind Waker and then, you know, Skyward Sword on the Wii when that came out. I was like, oh my god, this game is beautiful. And then I'm playing it and and it's just I love the game so much because you learn even more of the characters because they're more human. Like as the games keep coming out, they're they become more and more human that you could just relate to them even more and you know, and then Breath of the Wild, oh god, don't get me started on that. That game's that game's just amazing. And then, you know, Ocarina of Time was just such a huge thing as well because, you know, it was the first time a real 3D Zelda happened and it's just such a big deal. When that uh, started your whole career, basically. Yeah, Ocarina of Time is, has that place close to me because it really was like the first full Link costume I made based for, off of. But my favorite Links, if you have to talk about who my favorite Links are, I definitely have to go back to the old school days because he's like, he's like the Link I met that I became best friends with and started this journey on classic you know? NES. <laughs> yeah like classic nes you know the the old school link the nes uh the nes zelda link uh link to the past zelda the adventure link link you know with his brown pants it's like those three designs have just kind of stuck with me for a very long time and we had to deal with those ones for a long time until awkward of time came out you know why like of out of all nintendo franchises why did Zelda stick to you the most? It definitely has to be the fantasy aspect of it. Mm. You know, like the the castles and the and the heroes and princesses and and that stuff. Yeah. I like I was a sucker for that. I'm, I've always been a sucker for that growing up. And then a long time ago, I remember telling my, my my dad, I was like, "Oh, I wish I lived in medieval times." And he's like, "No, you don't." <laughs> growing up and knowing it now and knowing history now, I'm like, "Oh God, yeah, no, I don't want to live in medieval times. That'd be awful." <laughs> You know, I was like, I want to live in a castle. Knowing me, I'd probably be a peasant somewhere outside the castle. Or you'd be making but, the the uh, dresses for whoever. <laughs> actually, based on my name, I would be a blacksmith somewhere. Because uh, Hungarian, actually, Kovacs means blacksmith. Names are kind of based on your, uh, your, yeah. your uh, occupation. <laughs> so I am a descendant of a blacksmith somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably me. I would be a blacksmith. I'd be making the master sword. Heroic kid coming down the path named Link one day. That would still uh, be an honor. <laughs> Except they would end up in the woods somewhere and be like, where'd my sword go? Probably. An old man has it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's dangerous to go alone take this. And so besides Zelda, is there any other like uh, pieces of media or shows or movies that influence you in your life? or uh, Like besides like video games? Yeah, sure. Any movies, um, TV shows, anime, whatever. Uh, I don't really watch a lot of TV. <laughs> I really turn on the TV to play games. Um, I can relate so easily. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't remember the last time I actually w- sat down to watch a show, unless it was something Ghibli, because I- I'm a sucker for Ghibli. So I guess Ghibli, you would say as well. Um, Ghibli Castle Ghibli. in the Sky is definitely my favorite uh, Ghibli film. Uh, another favorite anime of mine is Record of Lotus War. Which is very based on D and D, I believe. Um, so I guess that kind of goes back to the whole fantasy uh, thing. So Record of Lotus War, of course, Sailor Moon. But I can't really think anything else that really does a huge influence or impact on me. Um, I mean, obviously, I love a lot of the Nintendo games. Um, another series I'm really big on is actually Mega Man. Um, I don't talk about it lots, but. Mega Man's been like my favorite series for like a long time. Actually, uh, I've been looking at uh, your Instagram. Um, I've noticed a bit. Uh, I've noticed some Samus costumes. Ooh, um, yeah. So, do you have any interest towards uh, Metroid yeah. or just Metroid? <laughs> well, in general, yes. but yeah. You can oh yes, talk I, mean, Metroid I love the Metroid. As well. Yes, yes, I love I love the Metroid series. Uh, I would love to make her suit from Dread. Like not like her upgrades or anything, but like the one, the, base, like the main the base, one. Yeah. Oh man, the base suit, that blue and white. With oh my god, it's 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 a beautiful suit. I want to make that's it. Something, <laughs> that's something we could look forward to. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to make it. I haven't made a costume in like a year because of you know COVID and cons kind of putting to a halt and everything. So it'd be a really nice comeback, but at the same time, I feel like I got to get myself mentally in the right place. I'm already making a new costume. I already have it. Like I'm looking at it right now in my dress form. I'll just give a hint. It's Fire Emblem. 
Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. oh. <laughs> um, it's Fire Emblem. Uh, let's see. Hmm, what other hint can I give? Uh, it's Three Houses. Even uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love Three Houses so much. I love the Fire Emblem series a lot, but mm-hmm. Three Houses is just like I'm still playing it. I already put like like almost 300 some hours into it already. Oh my goodness, That's a lot more than you. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm on my third route ah. right now. Yeah, I only played it. And then after that, <laughs> I've already time skipped. I'm doing uh, Golden Deer now, and I time skipped already. I'm I'm a sucker because I'm just like I gotta go recruit everyone <laughs> and I gotta like please everyone. I gotta S grade everyone. I gotta get them all up to as you know high of a high of a, a level as I can. Each time wanna... I play it, for some for some reason I I don't know why I do it because I'm just like I already did that in the last playthrough, <laughs> but no, I have to Well anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Oh yeah, this was one of the coolest interviews we had. And oh thank you. We hope I'm it was the same guys... for you. Yeah, it was really fun. I think this is actually my first like uh, podcasty interview. That was that was really a neat experience, and it's awesome. We would love it if you could follow us on Twitter and listen to our future episodes on Spotify and iTunes. Join our community Discord server to continue today's discussion, and we'll see you next time on the Switch Clicks podcast. <laughs>